The buck helped steady my legs as I trot before him. I made a show of tightening my braces, and he gave a snort. You're crippled, I see. Well, that just makes this duel somewhat problematic. I suppose you would be permitted to use a firearm? He sounded so disappointed. Oh, no, I don't need guns to beat you, I retorted, then blinked. Wait, I didn't? Wait, I didn't? I drew my sword and swung it like a baton before me. Is this acceptable? I asked with a grin, praying it was because I really didn't have a backup plan. I looked along the razor edge. It was certainly sharp. Damned sharp. Sharp enough to cut through power armor, though? He nodded once. We fight till one of us is beaten and surrenders. I'll not rob the wasteland of so valiant and noble a spirit intentionally. He reared up and flexed as he thrust his hoof towards the heavens. We fight for honor and civility itself. Let nothing dare interrupt our most glorious of battles. Pony against pony. Hoof against blade. Steel against steel. And then he boomed in an echoey voice, likely heard for a mile. Begin! His hooves dropped with a monumental crash. Piston slamming downwards with his powerful hiss of steam and a detonation that shook the ground beneath my already unsteady limbs, making me stagger. The stomps were merely a prelude for a massive leap, far too elegant and graceful for so colossal a pony. I raced forward and swung the silvery saber. The razor-sharp edge pinged against his helmet as he passed overhead. The impact of his landing knocked me off my feet and I rolled twice across the broken asphalt of the road before I scrambled to my feet again. He turned, and I saw a definite cut in his armor along his neck. If I can mark him, then I can beat him. If I can beat him, then I can kill him. Wait, what? Sorry about the nick, I said as I rose. <laughs> I wear it with pride and gratitude. The strong hoof family armor welcomes any mark from an honorable and valiant mare. Then I was fighting for my life as he lunged in with lightning-fast stomps, kicks and thrusts of those piston hooves. It was all I could do, clattering back step after step and trying to deflect those powerful kicks with the blade and finally just trying to stay out of the way. We might have been fighting till one of us was beaten, but one kick of those hooves and I'd be more than beaten, I'd be scrambled. There was no way I'd stand a chance like this. I had to attack. He reared up, and instead of dodging back, I moved inside his hoof. I didn't see any gaps in his armor, but from my own barding, I knew the joints where my best bet was at. I slashed the glowing sword at the pit of his foreleg and body, but Paladin's strong hoof reacted faster than I anticipated. Clearly, he wasn't completely without thought for his defense. The steel ranger closed the gap, and my blade struck off glinted steel plate legs. Well struck, but you have to fight better than that, I assure you. He said with his massive uh, body slam and nearly cleared me off my hooves. My braces clattered as I rolled again, swinging the blade towards his helmet. If I couldn't take out whatever he used to see... But he ducked his head, and the blade sparked off the armored ridge along his spine. I was cutting through his armor, but I was also getting battered to pieces. We danced around in a circle, with me giving ground. One of his kicks flipped me right over one of the wagon husks and into a mud puddle. I levitated a glob of muck and splashed it across his glowing blue eye panes. In the moment, he balked. I slashed at his legs and was rewarded with a hiss of air as one of the pneumatic lines broke. With luck, that would slow him down. But my, uh, and my advantage lasted only as long as it took him for him to toss his head, the goop refusing to stick to him. That's, that's cheating, I shouted as I backed away. He did seem to be moving slower. You fought well and valiantly. I commend you and ask with my deepest respect that you yield. Not happening. Not my friends are on the line. I said as I gasped for breath. You must be getting tired and all that metal. I wanted to kick some pony when I heard one of the steel rangers snicker. A little longer. P-21 almost has our bonds, Lacuna said. 
Hopefully, no pony would ask why the giant alicorn was lying down. I forced myself to grin as I kept moving back. Either way, I've got the range, and you don't. Eventually, I'll cut something important. Better watch out. I've nicked bucks before. A cunning fighter takes stock of their enemy's vulnerabilities. I commend you for the attempt. He said as he stepped back and rammed his forehooves to the ground. I moved to attack, but then suddenly the ground was lifted underneath me. The paladin heaved the slab of roadbed I was standing up with all his strength. However, with sufficient applied leverage, your advantage becomes a disadvantage. He cried out as I fell on my side and he kept pushing the slab of roadbed over. I barely got my hooves raised in time as it slammed down on top of me. I barely had time to drink a healing potion before two hooves slammed through the slab, pulverizing it atop me and hauling me through the rubble. Don't feel bad. This is part of the legendary strong hoof combat technique, passed down for generations, he said as he lifted me high in his hooves. Somehow I doubt that he planned to hug me again. Okay, enough of this. I hit Sats and targeted every magic bullet I could squeeze out of my horn at his helmet. Four flashes arced into his armored face. The magical energy tore into it, shattering the visor and steel. He dropped me as he staggered back, and I landed hard on the crumpled roadbed. The hilt of my sword peeked through the rubble as I pulled it free and I turned to my opponent. What? Paladin Sugar Applebaum's strong hoof looked down at me. Such a paragon of muscular beauty that I swore there were sparks dancing around him. Baby blue eyes twinkled merrily as they regarded the dirty bug that was myself. The white coat I could see was utterly smooth. A thick blonde mustache sat elegantly above his lip, and a tiny golden lock of mane curled off at his brow. Radishes had said that he'd cut off his horn, but she'd been mistaken. For the first time ever, I'd met a unicorn with a horn more compact than my own. He regarded me somberly. I see I owe you an apology. It was unfair for me to think less of you for your infirmity. He rose, and with a crackle and metallic popping, he shed his armor, revealing more of his impressive musculature. Truly, I had no idea if his armor was powered by magic at all, or if it was just him. He stepped free, rising up and flexing his legs, making his abdomen pulse with every potent twitch of his body. But now you directly face the physique that has been passed down the strong hoof line for generations. I glanced over at the others as he flexed his many massive muscles. It was astonishing how even suits of power armor could look stunned in moments like this. P-21 had a nosebleed. Oh, my. Luna murmured in my head. I managed to make eye contact with P-21 and he immediately wiped his nose and got back to work. Good thing, too. I'd hate to have to shoot him to get him back on track. I did that too much with Rampage already. Um, I sat down, blinking in shock. You can put your armor back on. Really? Instead, he planted his forehooves, twisted around, and blasted me with an apple buck right to the face. I barely raised my limbs in time to absorb some of the blow, but his kick sent me rolling across the torn-up ground. My head kept spinning for a few seconds, my vision filled with flexing images of sparkling, beautiful buff beefcake before I shook it off. You should never underestimate your opponent's security. Others have done that when facing you, and you've defeated them all, he said as he approached and then once more slammed his hooves into the ground, sending a ripple through the pavement that blasted me into the air. He was using some kind of freaky magic. Or was he just really that strong? I landed in a heap and hauled myself to my hooves. Then he was once more upon me, and almost all through my defense was gone, as he systematically pounded me again and again and again. It was all I could do to keep myself out of his hooves. I finally pulled together enough focus to bring my sword to bear and got myself a little room to work with. No matter how I swung, I couldn't catch him, Damn it! I have to win! They're my friends! I shouted, as he deftly avoided a horizontal slice. How the buck 
did that big and beautiful move that fast? Your devotion is commendable, but it is no greater than my devotion to my oath and order. He replied as he twisted under a slash, sweeping his hind legs under my own and knocking me over as he deftly regained his feet. Yield, I beg you. Never, I shouted as I brought the blade down for a savage killing blow. He rose once more on his hind legs, his massive majestic hooves slammed together on the silvery blade, stopping it cold as he stood before me. There is no shame in defeat, Blackjack he said, as those bright blue eyes gazed down at me. I gasped as he tossed my sword aside, exhaustion finally scattering my focus. He dropped to his hooves and turned, presenting his side. It was a clear shot in a futile struggle, but I was just that stubborn. I twisted and pulled back both my rear legs and slammed my hind hooves directly into his side with all my force. He'd be able to block or deflect or simply take it, I was sure. Then he'd punch me clear over the horizon, but I'd be damned if I gave up before then. But my hooves connected solidly against his left side just below the ribcage. Instantly, he rolled over wailing. Oh no! You've struck my splenic ganglion nerve cluster! A strong hope vulnerability has been passed down for generations! Oh, the agony, the injury! Oh, I must yield! He lifted his hoof to protect the spot I'd thumped. Glory was mouthing the words, Splenic Ganglion? And looked confused. Release this noble fighter's friends. Huh? All eyes turned to P-21 holding Lacuna's bomb collar in his hooves as he unlocked chains dangling around the three. His own collar was nowhere to be seen. He looked down at the explosive in his hooves, then back at the rangers. He spat the bobby pin back into his bushy tail. Oh, this is... awkward. I'll say. I kind of expected not to win. Then the street exploded. Thank Celestia, the street exploded. This was just the right time for an explosion. The blast tossed me aside, but Paladin Stronghoofs calmly looked in the direction of the smoking crater and beyond where two dozen ponies dressed in all spikes, red-painted metal armor were charging. Several unicorns were flinging explosive parcels, and many of the earth ponies had flamers already spurting burning sheets of apparently at random. Two arms, rangers! Our enemies have found us! Stronghoof declared as he ran to his shed armor. Magically, it reassembled itself around his massive frame, and even his helmet repaired itself around his head. The red ponies were herding some familiar, frothing psychopaths ahead of them. There had to be closer to thirty. Maybe more. Any ponies that would be... uh, that would use these sick raiders as living weapons weren't my allies. Let me help you, I shouted my magic seizing a tossed explosive and throwing it back at the gangers. You've demonstrated your honor, he replied firmly, but my order's code refuses accepting the aid of outsiders. We may as well accept their help, paladin. They're free anyway, Turnip said as he trot up to us. Besides, there's no question who's a bigger threat to our technology. It seems we have no choice, he said as he curled a hoof. Pistons hissing ominously. So be it. But even with your assistance, I fear that the burner boys are not easily dissuaded. Here they come. He announced as the racing burners closed in and things started getting toasty. I staggered out of the path of a gout of flame that washed over where we stood. The burning fluid made every bit of exposed skin prickle, even as it missed me. The ganger moved closer, twisting and to emulate me as he laughed in glee. Till the sword cut and cut through the fuel hoses to his flamer and wrapped him in a crimson sheet of fire. Then, suddenly, he was gone as the paladin gave a thrashing fireball a kick into another buck. Okay, I felt my stomach clench as two flaming ponies thrashed wildly, taking way too long to die. I really did not like fire. That was an ugly way to go. Give me a bullet any day.